Hello and welcome to this manufacturing system technology module 39. We were talking about rapid and linear positioning in the last module. Let us look at uh, a few more uh, issues uh, related to the circular interpolation, uh, which is actually a command given by uh, you know uh, G 0 2 as can be seen in this particular table illustrated here. Okay. So, uh, this uh, motion command is definitely uh, going to illustrate that the circular interpolation would take place in the clockwise direction. The question is from where to where uh, that has to be somehow specified. So, what you need is actually a degree of offset in terms of uh, a central position. Okay. And from that particular offset point, you have to go to another offset point. So, you start utilizing coordinates i, j and k to represent what are those offsets from the central point, when you talk about defining a certain arc. Obviously, the direction of the arc being clock or counter clockwise is represented by this g 0 2 and g 0 3 command. So, if we look at that uh, particular preparatory function, when we are executing it, uh, it differs from the g 0 0 and g 0 1 function in that, in this particular case the path followed by the tool in moving to the target point is required to be a circular arc, starting from the current tool position, moving in the clockwise direction and ending at the target position. So, what we really now need to mention is the current tool position and the target position somehow, so that now the arc can be defined in terms of a central uh, you know radius etcetera. So, for this uh, the uh, center of the arc is given by specifying uh, its location relative to the start of the arc. In fact, what we uh, prefer doing is to sort of you know uh, represent uh, a certain point, let us say in this particular point, this value a here. I would urge all of you to look at this particular figure. So, this value a here is at a position 20 10, okay. oh, sorry 10 20. If you look at the uh, common x y coordinate system that uh, they are using is uh, position 10 20 that we are talking about. So, uh, here in this uh, illustration, uh, this position 10 20 uh, is the start position for the particular arc and uh, the final position that this arc is going to go up to x y is basically this position right here, which is about 20 10. Okay. So, uh, you have to go from 10 20 coordinate to 20 10 coordinate to describe the so called arc. And further you have uh, been given uh, a sort of you know position coordinate 5 5 at which the tool is probably placed at some point of time. Uh, so, the tool has to now start from this particular c and go all the way uh, to this point a. The definition of a is not yet uh, provided uh, in a proper manner and obviously, the only the coordinate is uh, something that we know of a. And then from there the circular interpolation starts and you remember that g 0 2 if we mention, uh, mentions circular interpolation in the clockwise direction. Okay. So, it basically mentions circular interpolation in the clockwise direction. So, this controller probably is enabled to read everything in terms of uh, you know x y z plus minus 4 3 and similarly i j k again plus minus 4 3. So, I have already illustrated in great details what these things mean, what 4 3 means. It is merely indicating the position of the decimal point, uh, which is which is there you know from the start of the numeral all the way to the end of the numeral. Okay. So, <coughs> here now the, the question that is asked is that if supposing uh, the final coordinate of 
I would urge all of you to look at this particular line, this particular block of uh, statement that has been uh, given here. So, the block says N 15, obviously it is the principal identification number that is probably it is the 15th line of the program that is what it represents. And uh, the uh, G 0 2 obviously indicates that circular interpolation that it should uh, execute and the position coordinates x 20.000 and y 10.000 has been provided, meaning thereby this 20.000 and 10.000 are actually the final positions at the point B where the tool has to reach uh, by doing a circular interpolation. And obviously, uh, what is now mentioned is that let the tool go in the positive uh, x direction by 5000 okay, and in the positive y direction by 15000, meaning thereby that from the point 55, we are moving 5.000 direction or 5.000 uh, you know in the positive x direction to define the offset. So, this is called the offset point okay. and merely the i, j, k are defining the offsets that would be there with respect to the start point or the start position of the tool. So, the start position is at C and you are defining the offset point by mentioning that go to the positive x direction by an amount 5.000 which is mentioned here as i 5000 and go to the uh, positive y direction by 15.000, which is mentioned here as j 15.000. Okay. So, that is how you basically are giving the offset. So, I will just like to uh, sort of indicate this once more for your convenience, so that you are able to see the, uh, the difference uh, that this offset creates actually. So, you have been enabled by giving a position C and you have been said that the C is at 5 5 and you are asked to move for offsetting uh, to start the arcing process okay, in the clockwise manner to a point A by saying that go in the offset direction corresponding to the x axis uh, positive 5.000 and go to the offset direction j on the positive y axis by 15.000. So, that is exactly what you mean by this term here i 5000 j 15000. Okay. So, from the start position you have reached the offset point and now you are trying to execute the arc by going from this position to this position. Obviously, it will center around the c because you have mentioned the offset. So, offset means offset from the center. So, the controller interprets as if how much offset is from the central. So, automatically by defining C at 5 5, you, you do not see the definition of C at this particular line. Probably this has been defined in an earlier line when you are talking about the tool position. Okay. So, probably the last step had defined the point 5 5 for this particular uh, you know uh, position C here from which the machining would start to take place. So, it is probably the origin of the tool position or something like that. Okay. So, having said that all you need to do is how much you have offset in the x and y to start the arc about the point C and it is moving all the way to the 20 10 coordinate which is the point B actually which you see in this particular figure here okay, the 20 10. And that is how you actually uh, do the definition for the circular interpolation. Obviously, if the circular interpolation is g 0 3, the same thing would happen in the counterclockwise manner, meaning thereby now the b would be somewhere here rather than going in this direction clockwise manner, it would go in the counterclockwise manner and the b would be somewhere here. So, that is how circular interpolation is uh, being done. So, you have to be very careful about the direction. Obviously, by defining the position C from an earlier step, you have the center for the arc and you all need to do is to sort of program the offset value from the center and the final position up to which the arc would be executed for really executing the arc. That is how you do the circular interpolation. So, I will now uh, go to 
another aspect of the preparatory uh, functions, the G functions, which talks about canned cycles. Okay. And uh, basically, the canned cycle uh, came into existence, because uh, there were certain operations, which needed to be really repeated uh, more than uh, some other operations. Like for example, when we are talking about an engineering part, wherever there is a fastener, uh, which is kept within the part somewhere, there is the requirement of a drilling and a tapping process. Okay. Uh, similarly, if supposing there is a, let us say, uh, even a riveting that you are doing at some particular place to join uh, temporarily two or more members of, a, of an engineering assembly, you have to again do the drilling and tapping. So, such operations are very, very commonplace in engineering designs as compared to some other very specific operation, for example, maybe turning of the shaft by certain uh, you know value or making making it let us say uh, some kind of a stepped shaft. So, that can be only a one time operation. So, we have to have some ease uh, pumped into this whole CNC system, so that a programmer does not have to repeat uh, the, uh, the small program that would be there for let us say a very uh, widely used process like drilling every time he wants to do the program. Okay. So, uh, what he can do is, he can make certain cans, which the can uh, would kind of record all the different aspects of a single process, let us say drilling process and every time you have to do drilling, you just merely repeat that can. Okay. So, that is the logic, which has been utilized for uh, giving this uh, basis of canned cycles. So, uh, some sequences again, uh, you know of machining operations as I told you are used very frequently and uh, that are sort of standardized on special preparatory functions now. So, obviously, these canned cycles would be represented by now certain G codes. For example, there is a list of such a G codes which exists. The drilling can be G81 for example, G82 is pot face counter bore, G83 is deep hole drilling, G84 tapping. G85 is through boring in and out, through boring in only is G86 chip breaker drilling. So, these are all the uh, sort of you know uh, functions or machining operations, which are very commonplace to engineering assemblies and they have basically been converted into different cans. Now, every time you do G81, you only need to specify some aspects of the drilling into that single line of G81 or proceeding the G81, so that you can actually let the controller know that you do the whole drilling cycle in accordance to the can G81 now. Okay. So, that is the advantage. So, you are basically abridging or summarizing the whole drilling uh, from a three step process into a single step process. That is all what you are doing by a canned cycle. So, uh, let us say we just uh, see how this abridgement is done here for in a simple drill hole, hole drilling operation. Uh, the following sequences of operations are used, you had seen this before. So, position the tool just above the point where the hole is to be drill, drilled and then you set the correct spindle speed and start the spindle make it on, so that it starts uh, you know uh, doing the material removal and then feed the tool into the work piece at a controlled rate. So, obviously, because now it is rotating and it is doing the machining, so it has to go inside at a controlled rate feed rate to a predetermined depth okay. and then you retract the tool at a rapid rate to just above the point where the hole started. So, these are the four steps which are utilized now for doing the drilling operation. So, uh, how will you do it or how will you mention it within one block? The same sequence of operation uh, can be again and again repeated once this has been carried out. So, here is for example, a canned cycle which has been illustrated for this drilling. So, here you can see the moment it goes into the canned mode, let us say this 50th step of the program says that there is a canned mode G81, meaning uh, that there is a drilling process that we are executing here. So, the x and y coordinate corresponds to the initial position of the drill or the start position of the drilling process as the process uh, continues. Okay. So, here for example, it is saying 25.4, uh, 12.5 mm, meaning thereby that these are the coordinates which are where the position of the tool would need to be uh, before the or just before the start of the machining process or the drilling process. And then they are saying z minus uh, 10.000, meaning thereby now at this position you have to give a depth of about 10 unit in the negative z direction. Obviously, negative z direction again uh, means you know um, the, uh, the traversal of the tool 
towards the work piece that is why the negative uh, term here as I discussed in my earlier uh, classes or earlier lectures on CNC and you can go all the way to 10 units along the z direction and then you subsequently give at what feed rate. So, you are probably giving at about 500 mm per minute okay? because obviously uh, probably somewhere before this uh, line there may have been a line which might have utilized the command for the metric unit. So, you can do everything in mm or maybe it can also be inches depending on. So, I am assuming here that it is 500 millimeter per minute. So, the feed rate is 500 millimeter per minute and then obviously, when the drilling happens the coolant has to be in the on condition. So, m 08. So, this whole line is a one integrated line which talks about the whole machining process, okay? the whole uh, CNC machining process at one go. Okay? Uh, so, the advantage now is that whenever you uh, want to use the drilling process, you simply give the GIT 1, uh, figure out all these values, what is the start point, what is the depth, what is the uh, coolant on off condition, what is the feed and forget about the whole process. So, every time it will be executing the three steps automatically, you do not need to change these steps really uh, again and again. Okay. So, this in fact is an abridgment over the one which you had seen earlier in the tab sequential and the fixed sequential formats where the same one line was replaced by three lines. Okay. So, you are basically having three lines of code putting together in the single line. So, that is about CAN cycle. So, I think we are towards the end of all the preparatory functions now and we can move ahead with some of the other functions like the excess motion controls or even the miscellaneous commands or what kind of commands exist before starting the real programming. So, we will do that in the next module. Thank you.